Well, hello guys. Um, as promised, I thought I'd do a, a video uh, answering some comments and uh, just do it this way for right now. Uh, although my wrists are starting to feel a little better, the weather's kind of improving a little bit for the time being. But their prediction is that uh, this tomorrow it's supposed to be 44 and then the next day it's supposed to drop down to 3. I just love this roller coaster weather. Um, so I thought I would uh, kind of go through the last couple, three videos and, and just kind of uh, hit some of the highlights. Um, right off the bat, the first one that I do want to uh, mention is, is Bobby. Um, He's always commenting on my videos, and he's a real good friend, and I really appreciate your comments, Bobby, and thanks a lot for your uh, kind words and uh, inspiring words and stuff. Uh, old Radio Al also is uh, real good about the same thing, as well as uh, Phil from Steel City. 321PB. Um, again, you guys, you know, you're real kind with your words, and uh, I really appreciate your comments and stuff. And uh, so, thanks again for commenting and and following me and your your uh, and the comments that you give me. Um, John. Uh, for Joe from Joe R. Nunn. Uh, it's good to hear from you. Um, I consider your channel uh, and you as being a, a pro at this and uh, making videos and, and you do an excellent job of teaching and uh, a great restorer and I enjoy your videos a lot and it means a lot to me to hear from you. Uh, the one thing I did want to, I, I didn't, I guess I didn't make it very clear about the uh, tubes in the the metal tubes. Uh, I wasn't too concerned about getting the uh, rust off as much as what kind of paint to use uh, to paint them. Because uh, I'm not, uh, I guess my question was more, and I should have phrased it a lot better. Uh, should I use a high temp paint, you know, such as engine paint, or do you think that a regular enamel, you know, uh, would be just fine? Because uh, I, know, I know, you know, the rectifier tube and the output tube will get pretty darn toasty. So I wasn't sure if, uh, you know, if I should use a, a higher temp paint on those. And then, of course, the, it's the tube numbers is the other thing. Uh, I haven't quite figured out what to do about those, uh, whether I should just try to mask them off or or what. Anyway, um, that's pretty much it on this one. Um, now to uh, some of the comments on some of the other videos. Uh, Want to do something about the Hickok. Uh, I think the biggest thing is, is again, I, everybody, you know, that uh, commented on here, appreciate your comments and your kind words and stuff. One of the things I wanted to point out was I'm not as worried about the tube testers' accuracy, and, and the primary reason for that is is, is twofold. One. Well, I, I should say threefold. Number one is where the fire was located at. It was quite a ways from uh, a lot of the main circuitry. And two, the second thing is uh, on uh, tubesound.com, I believe it is. Anyway, uh, he's got a, a nice write up on uh, calibration of these. And I'd already ran through that except for the one part that I couldn't do, which was the micromoles actual checking um, the transconductance measurements. Uh, 
mainly because the meter reads the wrong direction and but everything else uh, is right on the money so uh, which entails quite a few voltage measurements and stuff so that number one showed me that uh, the units actually working fine uh, for the most part the second thing is is um, every one of the precision resistors and uh, as well as the power the other power resistors and everything that's in the main circuitry is all right on the money so if the switches are good and the resistors are good and the tubes are good um, then the tube tester will should be fairly accurate as well as the fact that once I do get it working the way it's supposed to I can do the final leg of, of checking it which I'm sure will be the transconductance will measure in just fine because of the simple fact there's only there's two precision precision resistors in that and both of those are right on the money um, the uh, L pot is exactly the way it uh, measures exactly what it's supposed to the other pot which is for the bias measures exactly what it's supposed to so all those parts are good so that's really was the biggest thing that I wanted to talk about on this video here and the comments on this um, one other thing too um, that started showing up in here and showed up in some of the other comments when I was uh, talking the other day about projects to build and I pointed out this thing up here uh, I, I need to start paying attention to what I'm saying um, this is actually a signal tracer. I mean, it is in a RF signal generator cabinet. That was an old one that was bad. Uh, had several things wrong with it, including the power uh, transformers bad in it. But um, I want to build, you know, show how to build one of these for you know a signal tracer. It's a real simple circuit, and it's a nice, handy little tool. But since I got a lot of comments. Uh, people looking forward to a signal generator then I plan on will build one um, more from the standpoint of showing how they're built and their theory of operation and how they work because uh, some of you guys were quite interested in it some were interested I think also from the standpoint you got a signal generator already that's not wanting to function correctly so if you um, see the circuit see how they're built and understand the you know the basic operation and how they operate it'll be a lot easier for you to figure out what's wrong with the one you got now I'm not sure exactly you know how many bands it's going to be that's going to depend on how many coils I've actually got available I'm not going to really get into um, uh, I'll get into the theory or the the basics of how to figure out a coil to make a coil and the number of windings and so forth uh, it's actually pretty simple but I don't have enough wire to really uh, at this point in time to actually do that but I do have some coils <coughs> and um, so I'm not sure how many bands will be but it will be a um, a um, modulated uh, signal generator RF generator that you can switch the modulation in and out you know you can either just run it straight as an RF generator or modulate it uh, and we'll see where we can go with that so the I guess now we're looking forward to three builds a signal generator RF generator a signal tracer and a radio so I'm not sure exactly what order but probably do the test equipment first and that way once the radio is built and it doesn't you know if it gives any troubles we can determine what's wrong with it so that was two things on here and and from previous stuff um, the troubleshooting video um, on that again thanks guys for all your comments uh, 
I did uh, answer some or one or a couple of them. Uh, Art, uh, you know, you you haven't got your bill yet in the mail. You know, I, I guess I'm gonna have to contact the billing department here and find out why in the heck they haven't sent it out. Sorry about the, any confusion on that. Anyway, Art, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'm glad you guys really liked the video, and uh, hopefully it helps a lot of others. Now, old Bobo, Bobo Radio, anyway, <laughs> I know I'm destroying that, who it was actually fully intended for. I think we got him on the right track. Uh, hopefully and he ordered a tube um, you've seen that in the, the last video I did I talked about this um, so it, it should uh, once he gets that tube hopefully that makes a big difference because it's really about the only thing that's in that circuit that could be bad uh, it's not a complex circuit so there's not really an easy way for it to uh, cause the problems he's showing unless the tube itself is shorted uh, considering the fact that he's got proper voltages in other places throughout the radio so thanks again guys and um, for all your comments on this now the last video is only netted like four or three or four comments and I, I'm hoping I didn't upset anybody or get them angry at me or or maybe you guys are just real busy right now and haven't had a chance to comment or anything um, I really do appreciate your comments and I really look forward to them um, and uh, you know they kind of give me insight on where I'm going with my videos they also give me insight on you know what you're interested in and and as well and and stuff and uh, plus they just you know let me know I'm doing all right uh, so you know Phil sent me a nice comment and I can't remember which video it was on but you know I made mention that sometimes I ramble a little bit which I'm doing now uh, he said I don't that my words make a lot of sense and thank you Phil I really appreciate that but sometimes I can get off on a tangent and get way off on what I meant, really want to be talking about anyway uh, I'm gonna be cutting this right here I'm gonna make another video on actually what's going on with the Hickok too so I'll be uploading the two videos tonight so please you know uh, you know keep your comments coming and uh, keep watching thank you so much for your support and uh, and your friendship and your kind words and I really really appreciate all of you guys and uh, thanks again I'll see you on the next video